Hello, good day. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Sage. Hi, Umbatola. Um, so, so I'm Sage. I use they, them pronouns, and I'm one of the outreach organizers along with Umbatola. Yes. Thank you so much, Sage, um, for your support and for joining us today on this section. So for those that are just joining, welcome once again. This is Ashuchi YouTube channel, and today we are going to be talking about the initial application. And I'm um, Omotola Yunis Omotayo. I'm one of the Ashuchi organizers, and I'm also the community manager. Um, so before we move on, we are going to be starting with what Astrochi is, like an overview of what Astrochi is. So persons who are just um, probably getting to hear about Astrochi understand better what the internship is. And, you know, you will know um, if you're actually that you're actually on the right path. So permit me to start this way by explaining what Astrochi internship is. So Astrochi internship is um, a paid remote internship opportunity and also to provide um, this internship opportunity in open source and open science like anybody is welcome to contribute to open source projects on astrochi we all know that open source is free for everyone irrespective of your feed and um, you can be in programming field you can you want to look at um, documentation projects, um, UI, UX, graphic design, marketing, um, community management, and so on and so forth. And this same goes to um, open science internship projects. Um, we encourage um, interns or applicants to apply so that they can work on open data sets, open data science projects, open collaboration, and so on and um, so forth. So another aspect of Astrochi that we want to talk about today is the two stages of Astrochi application. So we all know that um, there are two stages um, that are involved. We have the initial application stage and um, we have the, excuse me. So we have the initial application stage and we have the contribution stage. So before I dive into that further, I hope my previous explanation has explained to you that you don't need to be a programmer. There are a lot of projects that you can work on once you join the ASRC internship. So, and um, you don't need to have, you don't need to be an expert in the particular field to actually apply for ASRC. ASRC has, ASRC project has different levels, either for beginners or you are in, on the intermediate um, level. Sage is going to be going uh, in depth into that explanation very soon. So let's go back to the two stages of ASRC application. We have the initial application stage. Currently, we know that the initial application application um, started, I think, yesterday. For rules, before we start, before we go in depth to the initial application explanation and insights, um, I want to encourage everyone joining us from everywhere to take notes. If they have, if you have any question, you can ask in the comment. So you can watch and um, ask question the way it comes. And um, another thing I really want to emphasize on is the outreach documentation on the initial application or for the applicants generally is available on our website. Take your time to carefully go through this documentation to better understand what is required of you and every other thing that we are going to be explaining today. So please go through it. And we also are on the blog post on the Astrochi website. We have a section for um, frequently asked questions. You can also check that later too better answer your questions. So um, I'm going to leave it to Sage now to continue with the Astrochi eligibility rules. Over to you, Sage. Thank you, Omatola, uh, for, for that overview. Uh, so as Omatola mentioned, there are two stages of the Outreach application. So there's an initial application where you fill, fill out an initial application, that includes essay questions. And then there's the contribution stage where you look through projects and pick a project and make uh, work on project tasks, which we call contributions. So these are two separate uh, stages to Outreachy. So 
One of the things that the initial application uh, helps us understand is whether you're eligible for outreach. -y. But I want to go through our eligibility rules because um, it's really good that for people to understand them before they fill out the initial application. Um, so you may be able to figure out if you're eligible or not just based on our eligibility rules. Um, so let me share my screen. So why is they just trying to share their screen? Um, if you have any question or you want to introduce, get to meet other applicants, you can do so in the comment section. Um, feel free to introduce yourself, where you're joining from, you know, engage with one another, meet one um, and other applicants and, you know, you can start from there. So Sage, I can see your screen now. Are you ready? Yes. Um, okay. So there are, on the Outreachy website, there is a section that shows our eligibility rules. Um, there are a couple of different sections. One is just general eligibility. So we're open to anyone from around the world to apply, but you need to be over the age of 18 by the time the internship starts, which is May 29th. Um, Outreachy internships are full-time, and by full-time, we mean 30 hours a week. So you need to be able to work 30 hours a week. Uh, you need to be uh, able to work 30 hours a week in the country you'll be living in during the internship. There are other eligibility rules that we have, um, and it depends on uh, what your current situation is and what your past situation is. So one of the rules that we have is that you can only um, have an Outreachy internship once. You can apply to Outreachy as many times as you like. You can keep applying until you're accepted as an intern. But once you're accepted as an intern, you can't have a second internship. You can't apply again. So you're not eligible if you're a past Outreachy intern um, or your past uh, intern with the Outreach Program for Women, which was one of our old names for Outreachy. Also, you're not eligible if you were a Google Summer of Code intern. So if you have been accepted as a Google Summer of Code intern before, you're not eligible for Outreachy. So those are the, the um, in rules around past internships. We also know that there are some people that might have uh, an internship that's coming up. Maybe you already have an agreement with a company to do a summer internship. Um, with Outreachy, you can't have two internships at the same time. So you can't have the Outreachy internship and also do another internship at the same time. Um, we also have some rules around, uh, you know, if you have a job. I encourage you to read these rules very carefully. They are a bit detailed. I don't want to go in too much into them. Um, but if you have a job or if you uh, think you will have a job or you have a job offer, even if you think you're going to quit your job, you really need to read the section. Um, if you are going to quit your job or you have a part-time job, you still have to list those jobs on your initial application. So read this section carefully um, and make sure to list those jobs on your initial application. Um, other things uh, in our rules. So Outreachy is open to anyone around the world. We're open to people who are students, and we are also open to people who are not students. Um, so if you are not a student, you can apply to any Outreachy cohort. Outreachy runs twice a year. We have one internship that runs from May to August, and then we have another internship that runs December to March. So if you're not a student, you can apply to either the May cohort or you could apply to the December cohort. 
but if you're a student, then we have specific rules around when you can apply. So if you are a student currently, even if you're going to graduate, you still need to read these rules. You still need to list your um, school time commitments on your initial app, uh, application. So please carefully read these rules for students. Um, look and see which internship cohort you should apply to, and that is based on where your school is located in the world, whether it's in the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere. Um, so if you're a student, please read those rules very carefully. Um, and we also have some rules about if you are a student on a student visa. Um, if you are a student on a student visa, then please do read that section carefully. Um, and so the outreach eligibility rules uh, are very detailed, but each section you can decide, does this apply to me? Should I read this or not? And if you're not a student, for example, you can skip the eligibility rules for students. Or if you're not uh, currently employed uh, and don't have any job offers, you can skip the section about rules for people with jobs. So I really encourage you to read these very carefully. Um, yeah, that's about it for yeah. me. Yeah, thank you so much, Sage, for that in-depth explanation on uh, who is eligible, what you should know if you want to know if you are actually eligible. And I hope people are, are getting to understand that better. If you are, if you agree with us that that explanation is really in-depth enough, please put it in the comments. And if you have any question regarding this eligibility rules that we just explained, Put it in the comments as well. We are going to reply you directly on the comments and make sure you share on um, other platforms and tag us, which is so that we can see your questions. We are going to be there to answer you. So the next um, thing on our agenda is to um, dive into how you can prepare yourself for the initial application. That is um, preparing your chef, uh, yourself for the initial application so i want you to take note of um some things before um sage will come back to explain the essay and the application itself and these things are uh, these things that you should take note of include the fact that you can only fill the form once once you click on the submit button you cannot edit your application so with this in mind it is highly encourage, like we encourage everyone to have a separate document where you can put all your information, your responses to each of the questions. It is better to put them in an external document where you can edit. And when you feel this, the, this your um, response to the questions are ready to go, you are good to submit. You don't think you're going to edit anytime soon, then you can um fill it on the asset website and submit but when you are, while you are trying to edit wait for your response to be good enough you should also note that asset review application based on first come and first serve so we really encourage you to submit your application as soon as possible you shouldn't wait for the deadline we only encourage you to have an external document where you put your info to avoid the situation where you have submitted and you remember that you didn't have some things, you didn't include some things. So that is why we said you should have an external document. So um, it is also highly encouraged that you should, for students, you should have your school calendar at hand. So when you are filling the initial application and you are required to um, submit or put in the link to your put in the link to your initial, um, school calendar, you should also put that in. Okay, so um, that's the screen under the documentation needed. So any of this documentation that you need to back up your submission, um, that is school calendar, date of employment, um, if you are doing any online courses, maybe any coding school, and you want to show the organizers that, okay, I'm offering a course from so, so time to so, so time, you should have all these documentation documents um, 
prepared so that when you start your application, all you need to do is to attach the link where necessary and submit. And please note that, I, I think um, Sage will go further on that, but please note that you are not going to be able to edit your application once you submit. And that is why you should take um, this chat that we are having very serious. You should take the documentation that Asuchi has on the website very serious. So if you have any question, now is the best time for you to ask. And even after this chat, if you have any question, feel free to reach out to us via the comment section here or any on our, on our social media platform. We are going to be answering and giving you more insight on it so um i'm going to give it over to sage now to talk about writing your application essay thanks um so the initial application includes information about your time commitments which we talked about how to get documentation for the other thing that the initial application includes is uh, four essay questions. And it's really, really important that you fill out these essay questions thoughtfully with good detail um, and give personal examples. The essay questions are the major part of the initial application. So it's really important that you take time before you submit your initial application, read through the essay questions, have a good think about them, spend some good time um, uh, thinking about them and deciding, writing drafts of your essay questions before you submit them. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the different essay questions that uh, we'll have. The first one is pretty easy, which is what country will you be living in during the internship period? So from May 29th to August 25th. If you're gonna live in multiple countries, you know, list the country that you're gonna spend the most time in. So that one should be pretty simple, should not require too much deep thought, hopefully. Um, but the next one is when it starts to, you start to really get to think about um, your experiences and what information you want to put in your essays. So the question is, are you part of an underrepresented group in the technology industry of the country you're going to be living in? So for example, if I were to talk about my experience, in America, so say I'm going to be living in America, uh, the United States of America during the internship period, um, I would think to myself, um, am I part of an underrepresented group or marginalized group of people? So I might look through the, the list, I might think about other experiences I've had um, and you might talk about um, discrimination or systemic bias you face um, because of age or maybe you're disabled or maybe you're uh, a minority gender or a transgender person, not binary, or maybe you're a religious minority or you face caste discrimination or you're part of a marginalized tribe. This question is very specific to your experiences. How do you feel you are underrepresented? So make sure to provide details. And it's important to think about the people who are going to read this essay. They may not be living in the country that you're living in. So you may have to provide details um, about your culture, about your country. You might need to provide links about historic things that have happened. Um, and so think about how can I share my experiences, what I've lived, what I've experienced in a way that someone in another country could understand. 
Um, so there is a list of the different kinds of um, things you might consider, but Outreachy is open to anyone who experiences underrepresentation and systemic bias or discrimination. So it could be a different thing that uh, that you experience underrepresentation and discrimination or systemic bias. It's okay to talk about that in your essay. Um, so that's just you know how are you underrepresented? And then the next part is, the next essay question is, what is the systemic bias you would face if you applied for a job in the technology industry of your country? So if you applied for a job, um, how do you think you would be treated? Um, would you face systemic bias? Would you face discrimination? Um, tell us, and tell us about, either your experiences applying to jobs or experiences of people you know who are a part of the same underrepresented or marginalized group, what did they experience when uh, they applied for jobs? What do you fear might happen? Um, and through all of these essays, I just want to emphasize we strongly encourage you to share your personal stories but also, we won't judge you if uh, English is not your native language. We won't judge you for your writing style or your grammar or your spelling. We just want to know what your experiences are. Um, so that's a question about employment in the technology industry of the country you're going to be living in during the internship. Um, that's that essay question. Um, and then the next essay question is, does your learning environment have few people who share your identity or background? And when I say identity or background, I'm thinking of that list of uh, classes that we were, d different types of identities or backgrounds, like uh, whether you're disabled, what your age is, whether you're part of a marginalized caste. That's the kind of identity background I'm talking about. When I ask the question, does your learning environment have few people who share your identity or background? So learning environment could be something like a school, a university school. It could be online courses. It could be a coding school. It could be a technology hub. When you go and you're trying to learn about uh, technology or the technology industry, science, mathematics, open science. When you look around, do you see people who share your identity or background or do you not? And if so, what do you see? We want to know what your experience is. Um, and the last question is, uh, what bias or, or discrimination have you faced while you're learning these skills. So in these areas like your school, online spaces, coding schools, um, tech hubs, have you faced any discrimination or, or systemic bias? And if so, tell us about that. I know that it can be hard. Um, I know that sometimes it can be hard to talk about the kinds of discrimination that you may have faced, but we are here, we want to know about you, we want to know what uh, your stories and your experiences are. So, you know, do tell us about what kind of systemic bias or discrimination you face. Do make sure that, um, that you tell us about a personal experience you had or a personal experience you fear you had, have. Um, I, we know that sometimes these experiences can be very hard or harsh. That is okay to write about them. We do ask that you add uh, a content warning so that we know 
before we start reading your initial application, what are you going to talk about that was hard or harsh? Um, and that's just to help our application reviewers prepare themselves to know what they're going to be reading about. So those are uh, the five uh, essay questions and that optional content warning. Um, so these questions will take you some time. You take time to read them, to understand them, and then take time to write your drafts for them before you submit your initial application. Very important. Um, thank you so much, Sage. So we're going to give Sage some time to take coffee and um, before moving to um, the initial application itself, I mean, filling out the initial application. So I just want to do like add um, one or two sentences to what um, Sage has already explained. Please note that the person that is going to be um, probably within your application is not from your country. So while you are trying to explain the discrimination you face in the country you're going to be living in, it's um, also very important for you to write, um, to add links for the person that is going to be reviewing to um, actually agree with you or better understand what you are trying to explain. So this is very important. So that scenario you want to talk about, if it's a country-wide stuff, you might want to add um, links to reports that proves that or anything to just back up um, your explanation. So if you have any question at this point, feel free to um, add the question in the comments we are going to be looking through and we are going to be responding to your questions one after the other remember you can as well drop your question on mastodon you can drop on twitter and you can drop on youtube right here right so share this link as well with your friends network that wants to apply for the astrology internship so i think sage is ready to take um the next section which is uh, filling out the initial and this is the period a lot of persons have been waiting for yes i want to fill the initial application i want to apply for us so sage is going to take us through the step i need everyone to please pay attention to this um section thank you thank you so much sage over to you now um so the outreach application, I'm, I'm showing the, in, the first initial application screen. Um, and this is just for applying for the May to August internships. So if you reviewed the eligibility rules and you think, oh, I'm going to apply for a future internship cohort, just wait, don't fill it out now. We're, this is only for the May one. Um, and as we, we talked about the different documentation that you need, we need, you know, if you're a student, you need your uh, academic calendar. If you're uh, taking online classes, then you need to have that already. And remember, the most important thing is you can only fill out the initial application once. So make sure you have your draft of your essays, have it all ready before you get your initial application uh, page up. So this warns you, make sure you have a stable internet connection. Um, I know sometimes for some folks, their internet may be unstable. So maybe go and make sure that you've got a stable Wi-Fi connection or go to an internet cafe to have a stable connection or wait until the weather clears up. So make sure that you have a good stable connection. Um, and then each, you'll have multiple sections in the outreachy initial application. The first section is going to ask you some questions. Make sure that when you, um, and you, you get to the questions that you click either yes or no for each question because if you do not click yes or no it will pick an answer for you and so you want to be the one to pick that answer so don't go on to the next page until you click yes or no and fill out all of the required 
uh, fields in that page. And it will note every field that doesn't say optional is required. So click yes or no for every single question. Um, once you fill out each of the questions, and some of the questions have um, uh, text at the bottom that may give you more context to help you answer the question. So read each question carefully, say yes or no for each question before you go to the next page. Um, go to the bottom of this page. Um, each of the pages is going to have a uh, like next step, so you can go to the next step. And then once I go to the next page, there will also be a previous step. Always use those next and previous buttons. Don't use your browser's forward and back buttons. Um, and when you get to the end, there will be a submit button instead of a next step button. So take your time, read through it, go through all of the sections, and when you click Submit, it's submitted. You can't edit it again, so make sure that you've got all of your answers and essay questions and documentation all ready before you start to fill this out. So I think we're good on that. Okay, um... Okay, thank you so much, Sage. Um, just like Sage explained, that is the outreach initial application form that you'll be asked to fill. There are four, um, there, for the essay, there are four types of questions that are going, four or five, five questions that are going to be asked. Sage has explained. If you are just joining and you missed any of this explanation, you can always listen to the recording. It's going to be available on our YouTube channel. And Sage also showed, um, they showed us the application itself. It is important for you, the optional part, it is important for you to click either yes or no. And the one without options, it is important for you to fill in the right information, attach the necessary documents to back up your um response that is very important and make sure you use the left or right button previous or next step button before and finally before you submit check it again and that is why we really encourage you to put your response in a document and prepare all your supporting documents at hand before you start or before you submit most especially before you submit because you can't edit your application Okay, so um, now our audience have uh, learned some things, get, uh, they've gotten insights on how to apply the eligibility rules, who can apply, what they need to write in their essay, they have um, more and detailed explanation on that. So I know question, we are having questions on, yes, I'll fill the initial question, what's the next thing? I've submitted my application. What should I do next? What should I expect? I didn't get a notification that my application has been submitted. Should I be worried? Uh, and we also have a question on I'm not a I'm not a woman, I'm not a girl. Do you think I can apply? Um, this question we should um you can check the Artuchi website to check for our past uh, interns. Outreach will welcome everyone. I mean, everyone. All you need to do is to note or prove when you are applying that you have faced systemic bias or discrimination in the technology industry of your country that you're going to be living in during the internship period. So everybody is welcome, regardless of your tech level background, either you're just starting out in open source or open science, you want to build your skills. We have had um, past interns who are just applying for our internship. They don't even know uh, most things about the project they apply for, but they brought in their willingness to learn. They are open, they research more on the required tools or skills they are supposed to know of and they applied and they are doing well so watch out for more chats with these past interns who just apply for the first time who keeps applying maybe after the initial application stage they didn't get into the contribution stage but applied again and eventually they got into the so watch out for more chats with these um 
persons that have actually walked the walk. So we are not just saying it's persons who have been in this situation, who have gone through these steps before you. Their stories are going to be really inspiring. So I want us to, I want everyone to watch out for, to meet and chat with these um, past intents. So the next thing, I know a lot of questions regarding that are going to be upcoming now is what next? So um, Sage, you want to tell our audience what next? Yes. So after you fill out the initial application, you won't get an email from the Outreach you website, but you will get on your, uh, when you finish it, when you submit it, you'll get a verification, a page that says your application was submitted, here are the details, and so you're assured, yes, your application has been submitted. Um, if you log in and you go to uh, outreachy.org slash dashboard, you'll also get a confirmation there that your initial application was submitted. Um, the other thing to note is that once you have submitted your initial application, now it's time to prepare for the contribution period. So we're going to have another chat that is one week before the contribution period opens. But in the meantime, I would really encourage you to review the Outreachy application guide, uh, applicant guide, because it has a section in it that says, here are different things you can do to prepare yourself for the contribution period. So it has things like um, links to blog posts that past Outreachy interns wrote about what it's like to apply to Outreachy and tips for applying and how to make your, um, uh, yourself stand out among the other people who are working on project tasks. The other thing this section has is resources that you can use to learn about open source. So if you are new to open source, I really recommend you look at some of these resources, do some tutorials, and especially the, um, the GitHub lab and the up for grabs. If you want to practice some of your um, technology skills, then there are sites that are free to learn on, like Free Code Camp, which is also an open source website. Um, so I highly recommend you check out some of those resources in the applicant guide. And also, just reading the applicant guide itself will give you a lot of insight into what it's like to apply and to work during that contribution period. So even before you submit your initial application, you may want to read through this and you know get an idea of what it's like to be an outreachy intern. So there's plenty of things you can do between submitting your initial application, which you should do early, because uh, it's first come, first serve for reviewing the initial applications. So once you've submitted it, Go ahead and go look through the applicant guide, talk with us, talk with the mentors, um, chat with us on social media, listen to some of our chats with uh, past outreach interns, with mentors about open source careers, and get excited to apply to Outreachy because we are excited to have you. All right, thank you so much, Omatola. Okay, um, thank you so much, Sage, for that explanation. I know right now a lot of persons feel so much empowered and ready to apply for the Artwitchy uh, internship. So we are looking forward to as many as possible applications. Remember to tell your friends, your colleagues, your sisters, everyone, tell everyone, advocate for Artwitchy, tell them the initial application is now open and um, Sage, I think we should do like a chat summary of everything mm. we've discussed today. And I really wanted to start that. 
Right. So we have discussed a lot in the last 45 minutes. Uh, and so if you are just joining us now, I'm going to give you a brief overview of all the things we talked about so that once the chat is up and done, then the video is up, you can go back to the different parts of the chat. Uh, so the first thing that Omotoma covered was an overview of our Uchi and the two different types of application periods, which is the initial application period and then the contribution period. So if you don't know what those are, I suggest you go back to the overview of outreachy section so that you can learn what those are. Um, and then the next one that we covered was eligibility, the different <laughs> eligibility rules we have and what you need to know uh, about whether you're eligible for outreachy to apply for an outreachy internship. Uh, Omatola covered the kinds of information that you will need, documentation, school calendars, um, work dates that you'll need to have before you fill out your initial application. So do make sure to get those documents, go through that section, that part of the video before you fill out the initial application. And then I talked a little bit about the five essay questions that are in the initial application. I gave you some tips for how to fill them out, um, how to ace those, uh, those essays. So I highly recommend that you go back and listen to that section because the essays are super important. They're so yes. important part of your initial application. Um, and I went over a little bit with the initial application interface, talked about, you know, how you have to make sure to answer every question on the page before you go to the next page. And you can only submit your initial application once. There's no editing, so make sure that you have your answers before you go and fill out that initial application. And I think that's a bit of our summary. So thank yeah. you so much for hosting this, Omotola. It was amazing. Thank you so much, uh, Sage, for bringing your expertise to this, explaining in details what is expected, what the applicant should look forward to. Um, I really appreciate your support on this. And for everyone joining us, thank you so much for joining us. And um, we also want to use this period to talk about, to highlight the fact that the community um, application is ongoing. Please remember to apply to join Asushi as a mentor. Thank you so much, everyone. We'll keep answering questions. If you have any questions, keep dropping it. We'll keep going through the questions and giving you more insights if needed. We are looking forward to your applications. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.